All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about motorizing Trix Bricks switch tracks, which is a bit of a tongue twister. Um, so you've just got these three studs there and you're just trying to push it left and right to switch the track. And uh, this is <laughs> a design I kind of quickly threw together. Um, it kind of worked okay, um, not perfect. Um, the clutch gear is just, you know, the, the slipping is a little bit weird. Um, so it's going to need uh, varying lengths of time in order to get it to switch correctly. Uh, and then I had this up top where you could switch it yourself. Um, but I kind of gave up on this. Um, this is a design by Nova Casa. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> uh, he is the developer of the Brick Rail project, which will be linked in the description along with the uh, rebrickable instructions to build a switch machine Similar to this, this is actually kind of a prototype I threw together before I ordered parts. And this was a test trying different um, gearing with it. It's normally going to use a, a 24 and a 8 tooth gear. If I'm not mistaken, the instruction still shows the clutch gear, but I would omit it. And we'll get into that later. Uh, but it's a very simple design. And I think it'd be fairly easy to extend this out if you're running very wide trains that might interfere with some of this. But it is pretty low profile so i mean for your if your train's hitting any of this um you'll have to figure something else out but i kind of doubt it i mean this is pretty low profile uh near the track because remember as it's going along uh your cars will kind of do that deal where they'll um drift over a little bit and that's where i really ran into trouble with um trying to motorize these and another thing i'll mention is if you'll see here the switch mechanism is on the inside of the curve whereas on this one it's on the outside i had to order this part separately from tricks bricks and then uh put it with the rest of the track from these switches i already had so i actually have a lot of extras of just this part uh with the throw on the inside i just found it much harder to work with so we're going to go to a real quick uh parts haul for all of this i got enough parts to build I think it was 16 of these, something like that. <laughs> and then we're going to play around with uh, using power up and using power functions and all that kind of stuff and try different things with it. So let's get into it. Okay, so this package is from Brick Boost. And I was just really impressed with uh, the service I got. <laughs> um, they had uh, listed in their terms if you want it rushed to uh, just say so. And I was like, well, you know, yeah, <laughs> I generally hesitate to do that, um, but uh, I had some parts I had ordered from someone else. They just haven't showed up. Uh, they haven't even, they haven't said anything. It's been a week and a half. Um, so I got to deal with that. Um, it's somebody I've ordered for before. Anyways, but just, they did such a great job. Everything's packed very well. I'm pretty sure they shipped it within like two hours. <laughs> it was like, like, don't ex expect them uh, to do that for everybody, but... Um, they certainly got it out the door as quick as I could, and I really appreciate that. Um, so we'll just go through this quickly. Um, got a bunch more of these uh, bracket pieces and some clips. I'm always needing stuff like that. More train wheels, um, which I'll, I probably have already used these in some projects I'm working on. Um, lots of, uh, so yeah, I got these one by one Technic bricks with axle hole but it's but it's the actual uh, locked axle kind of thing that was very important so most of these parts are going to be you know to build these uh, switch machines so i got a bunch of technic pieces um i'm sure a lot of this i already had uh but i try to replenish stuff as i go um so yeah more brackets uh a couple train bogey plates they have those uh some control panels for trains uses those a lot um just a ton of uh these technic guys so I think each build takes three of these, um, and then there's the ones that have the axe hole. Um, they're in here somewhere. Oh, and a bunch more droid arms, using the, quite a lot of those, uh, if you can see the bag. <laughs> and dark azure tiles, because I've got some cool projects going for that. Um, so I just quickly wanted to mention that um, they really hooked it up, got it shipped out quick, and did a really great job packing everything. Uh, so I want to make sure they got a shout out. All right. Well, here is the finished design. Um, I think it looks pretty, pretty sleek. And again, very low profile uh, where your trains should not interfere with it. 
especially if you have to throw on the outside of the switch. So here I'm using a third party M size motor. Um, that's why it doesn't have a Lego logo on the back. Uh, because if you're, if you're doing 10, 15 uh, switch tracks, that's a lot of money <laughs> for official Lego motors. So that's why I don't mind using third party in this case. Uh, for things like GBC and whatnot, I'd rather use official ones. Um, I'm trying to think of the modifications I've made. So if you'll see, this is a brown um, axle with stop on the end, uh, right on the other side of that eight tooth gear. And that just makes it a little bit easier for me if I want to remove the motor, use it for something else, put it back on. And then in the instructions, it has a two by four curved piece there, but I'm using the two by two with a one by four plate there because uh, these were in pick or break. I have an entire cup full but the two by four is, I mean, they're like 50 cent a piece sometimes. If you need a bunch of them, it's going to be several, you know, dollars. So I, I didn't worry about doing that. Uh, but they're built pretty sturdy. Um, well, it's going to be hard to do it manually with the motor on there. But uh, let's try it with uh, a nine volt solution. Um, it, well, it's not technically, but <laughs> um, I'm using 4.5 volt touch sensors, a nine volt speed regulator, and underneath here, um, it's actually right at the third mark on there. So it's, it's, I think it's about five volts if I remember correctly. Um, you really don't need nine volts for this. Uh, this is a custom, uh, adapter. So I've got a nine volt end over there. Power functions end over here. There's no Lego logo because I get these, uh, from AliExpress and make my own cables. And I have an entire video on that if you want to check that out. Um, so let's try it just like it is. So, okay, you can see it works pretty well. Oh. Ah, these, these buttons, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and you can just hold it down. You don't have to worry about it stalling. Um, if you're using like this, I'm using about a five volt supply. Uh, it just stalls and it doesn't rip all this apart. <laughs> um, so I'm happy with that. I wanted a solution that was going to work well with this existing uh, infrastructure, but I'm also gonna be using Powered Up and the Brick Rail project, and then probably eventually uh, the, wait, I said that backwards. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be using the Brick Automation Project software uh, to test this with Powered Up, and then um, eventually I'll get around to trying the Brick Rail project and doing some automation. I actually tried it um, just now for the first time, but I was having, I was getting some errors. I probably did something wrong. I'll, I'll get uh, that figured out later once I actually get into that, um, I like I said, there will be a bunch of links in the below so you can follow Novacasa on Brick, uh, Rebrickable, and uh, he has some YouTube videos as well. So follow all the things, hit like button on all the things, you know the drill. <laughs> all right, so let's get all this out of the way, and I'll get the uh, my laptop set up. Okay, well hopefully you can see the screen here. Uh, this is the Brick Automation Project software. It's pretty old. Um, it hasn't been updated since 2020, uh, unless anybody wants to do some software development. So it works with all of the uh, powered up hubs, and it also works with BooWiz, only the 2.0, and SBrick. Uh, in my experience, it works fine with uh, BooWiz and SBrick for controlling switch tracks. Uh, they do not work well for trains. As for, the speed just isn't right. Um, but I was asked that before. How are you controlling switch tracks with a BooWiz and a LEGO remote? Uh, and that was through this software. You can connect the remotes as well and uh, control things with that. So it's already scanning. We'll just turn on our hub here and it will connect. And then we will go to configure, set it up for switch standard, hit OK. And then now we can control the switch with the left and right here. So let me get that where you can see it. So it works perfectly. Uh, what I really like about this switch design is that I can go between my kind of uh, nine volt electrical solution, or I can use it with a powered up hub with this software, just like I have before. And I don't have to make any modifications to this. I don't have to do any gearing, any of that. Uh, one cool feature of the brick rail project software is that you can go in and change the pulse uh, duration for these in case you have something different. Um, again, I hope to get into it 
<laughs> at some point. But for now, uh, all the links will be in the description below. So I'm very excited about this. Uh, huge thanks to Nevacasa for all the development on, on the software, as well as uh, the instructions for the Switch Track. Um, I'm really excited about it, and it works really well. And take it from someone who's tried to <laughs> make some Switch machines. Uh, they did not work very well, but this is a very well thought out design. I know he went through several revisions to get here. Uh, and you can absolutely tell with how well it works. So that's it for the video today. Uh, huge thanks to the channel members who help keep the lights on here. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.